I'm Eileen Nash. Join me every week as we meet interesting people who will teach you new, creative ways to manage stress and embrace vitality in your life. Grab a cup of tea and join me for this adventure. If you have any interest in alternative healing practices, you'll enjoy meeting Nancy Raquella, a licensed acupuncturist. She shares information on how to find a practitioner, as well as the history and theory of acupuncture. Welcome to Restore Your Caring Soul. My special guest is Nancy Raquella, who is an acupuncturist. She's actually my acupuncturist. <laughs> so welcome to the show today, Thank Nancy. Thank you. Thanks for being on here. Mm -hmm. Acupuncture has a really rich story, and I've had an excellent experience at your hands. Mm -hmm. And um, so I'm wondering if you could tell us a little bit about yourself and how you came to this path. Mm -hmm. Well, um, I've been an acupuncturist for 30 years now. I, I can't believe it. It's been a long time. But I, I actually lived in Japan when I was in college. And it was, I went to UC Berkeley, and I was a, it was a junior year abroad program. Uh, and I went over to actually study religious studies. And I met a Japanese gentleman there that was becoming an acupuncturist. And I learned all about acupuncture and actually had some treatments from students and other acupuncturists there and just fell in love with acupuncture. And I was only in my early 20s, but I just had this determination this was what I wanted to do. Oh, interesting. Had your educational background be, was that gearing towards that, or did you have no, to redo? Uh, I had to redo. I was in uh, religious studies, and I came back and did some other careers. But when I came back from Japan, I um, found an acupuncturist, and I would go, even though I was in my 20s and very healthy, I would go maybe every six weeks for what we call a tune-up and just a checkup to make sure I stayed healthy and uh, balanced my energy. And I probably asked more questions than most people because I was so interested mm -hmm. in learning about acupuncture. And then one day I was at the acupuncturist and she said, they're going to start schools in San Francisco. And you, you've been asking so many questions, and I know you're interested. You should look into it. Uh, I had to do some prerequisites, um, some science classes, anatomy and physiology. And I entered in the, it was either the second or third year of the program in San Francisco. And that was in the early 80s. Oh, that's, yeah. You're a gifted practitioner, I can and, tell you. And, <laughs> you know, it's been a long time, and I, I still love what I do, so oh. love going to work and, and helping people out. That's great. So can you share a little bit about the history of acupuncture? Well, acupuncture um, originated in China. Uh, they don't have the exact date, but um, a few thousand years B.C., the first uh, treatise on acupuncture is called the Neijing, and that was written somewhere between 300 and 500 BC. So acupuncture's been around for a long time. Mm -hmm. The Neijing, uh, this original treatise on acupuncture, has all, talks about the history of acupuncture, as well as all the components of acupuncture. It's uh, very ancient, but it just comprises everything. Can you share a little bit about the um, theories that go into acupuncture? Yes. When we look at the patient, we look at the patient a little differently than the Western practitioner. We look at the patient, we want to keep the patient healthy. And a lot of people come to us even before they get sick. So in ancient China, the emperors had their own acupuncturists, and the acupuncturist was meant to keep them healthy through the use of acupuncture and herbal medicine. And when the emperor got sick, the acupuncturist lost their job. And sometimes they lost more than their job, and they would just get the next person to become the acupuncturist. So acupuncture and acupuncture in Chinese medicine is a whole system of preventative medicine to keep patients healthy. Now, of course, if you do get sick, you can still use acupuncture and herbal medicine. Um, traditional Chinese medicine has its own way of diagnosing the patient. 
that's slightly different than Western medicine. When a patient comes in, the first thing we do is we just look at them and just assess them. We listen to their voice, uh, and then we ask questions about lifestyle and uh, what might be wrong with them. But we also check the pulse a little differently than Western medicine. We don't just count the beats. There are 28 different kinds of pulses that we look for. Mostly, I probably find five or six of the main pulses that I see a lot but there are a lot of different pulses that we can find. Are they on different points of the body where you check? The, the pulse is at the wrist, and can I show you? Yes, absolutely. So there are, we use three fingers, and there's three pulses on each hand, superficial three and deep three. And we actually feel with our fingers, kind of like your fingers on a violin string, trying to feel for the tension under the fingers and how it rolls through your fingers. If it's choppy or soft, or if you have to press way down and there's no pulse. Mm -hmm. The most common pulse I see these days is people are stressed. I believe and it. And we call it a, a liver chi stagnation pulse. It's very choppy. And uh, when I see that pulse, I, or I feel it in their um, their hand, I, I know already to ask them about their stress level. And acupuncture can also really help people with their stress. Oh, great. Now, ex explain about chi. So chi, chi is a, a form of energy. Chi is energy. Uh, 30 years ago when I started, you know, becoming an acupuncturist and learning about chi, Chi and energy, the word energy wasn't as popular. Now there's energy bars, there's energy drink, everybody's talking about their energy. It was kind of a new word. It wasn't as used as the way we use it these days. So chi is a word for energy. And when we're looking at the chi of the body, we're looking how the energy flows in the body, how the energy flows in the organs, and how the energy flows in the channels. The channels are called meridians, and the meridians flow up and down the body, down the arms, down the back, and a few of them actually f flow around the waist. But when we actually check your pulse, we mm -hmm. can check the energy flow in the different energy channels, which relates to the organs. So the acupuncturist might just check your pulse and tell you some things that you didn't even know were wrong with you. Oh. But we're working with energy. So if I said, uh, maybe your liver, your, I just talked about that liver pulse. Many people have what we call a wiry liver pulse, which is showing stress. But that doesn't mean your liver organ has a problem. It's the flow of energy in the body. And then when we work with acupuncture, trying, people always say, well, how does it work? Well, or True. what are you doing? We're, we're working with balancing the flow, and sometimes when we're ill, the flow is deficient, and sometimes the flow is excess. So there's too much energy going to a certain area. Say for a headache, when you have a headache right, up here, you're getting, that's again is it related to that liver energy I was talking about, but any kind of headache where you really have any pounding in your head or the back of the neck, that's usually too much energy flow in the energy channel of the liver. Now, maybe you're exhausted and tired. That could be a deficiency of energy flow. So with our acupuncture treatment, we uh, as acupuncturists and traditional Chinese medical doctors, we learn to balance the energy flow in the channels by putting the needles in certain places on the body and in certain energy channels. Fascinating, it, huh? It's completely yeah. fascinating. What are some of the tools that you work with to do the work? Most always use needles on the patient, and that would be the acupuncture. We, I also recommend supplementation with Chinese herbs and sometimes just general regular supplements. But we also use something called moxibustion. Moxibustion is a heat treatment, and that is used for usually deficiency. You can heat one of the energy points, the acupuncture points. You can heat mm -hmm. that with a, um, a moxa. Moxa, 
uh, the moxa I use looks like a cigar. It's rolled up and we heat one end of it and then we put the heated end near one of the acupuncture points. And that acupuncture point gets nice and warm. And there's a very interesting thing that we do sometimes. You can actually heat your little toe. And I do that for women sometimes that have a breech baby. Oh my goodness. And if you heat the end of the baby toe, the, the baby <laughs> can turn. And I've had that happen many times. I, I and of course, then if, if it doesn't, they'll go to their doctor and work with their physician. And I've had many physicians send their patients here to try this first. Oh, that's, that's Isn't fantastic. Isn't that fa fan It is. It's kind of, well, and now that they don't know how it works, actually. Mm -hmm. it, it's, but it does. And it, I, it's kind of amazing. Right. Do you ever attach electricity to the well, You know, and sometimes we put, ele I put electric on, uh, electric stim on the needles. We call that electroacupuncture. And often it's for pain. Often it's usually on the back. Say you have lower back pain. And I would put needles along the spine and then put the electrodes on uh, a few of the needles. And it doesn't hurt. It feels kind of tickly. Mm -hmm. and I've had that here, yeah. I and, think. And it, it's, it enhances the treatment, especially for pain. The elect electroacupuncture, you get two ways to get rid of your pain. One, just the use of the acupuncture needle in the meridian point to help the energy channel. And secondly, to work with um, the electric stem actually breaks the pain signal. I see. Yes, because I've come in and for sciatica or I had a problem with my shoulder and my forearm. I've come many times, <laughs> but I might get a needle in my head or my neck. So we all, I often put needles in a, a distal location that could be helpful for a headache even. There's a, a point on your foot between your fourth and fifth toe on, we call it the gallbladder energy channel because that energy channel, meridian, runs from the side of the foot all the way up the side of the body, up to the back of the head, around to the forehead, and back around the ear. So sometimes I put a needle in the foot and twist it, and someone's temple headache goes away. That would be And they're always amazing. Fine. But you only put a needle in my foot. And, but it, it's, it mo removes the blockage. Have you ever seen this little physics um, apparatus where there are three little balls hanging on string and you hit this, you take this ball and you hit the middle one and the far one moves and they swing back and forth. Well, the same principle, when you put it, a needle in the foot and you twist it and get the energy flow, the energy flows up that channel mm -hmm. and opens up the blockage that could be in the back of the neck, the back of the head, or in the temple to release the headache. So it's fascinating, but that it works is. very well. And I often teach my patients just to rub the points too, and, and you know, to oh. massage them, and that can help even a headache too. So. That's great. And you use a tuning fork sometimes. Sometimes I use the tuning fork, and I use that actually on the energies of the chakras. And chakras are energy centers that we all have. We have seven of them, starting at the base of the spine, going up to the crown of the head. and. That is, energy blockages can hang out in the chakras, and the tuning fork just opens up and opens up the flow of energy. And I think medicine these days is all acupuncture, Chinese medicine, is all about moving the energy, opening it up. Even yoga and meditation, they're yes. about moving the energy. There's, yeah, there's a strong um, influence of the chakras with yoga. Right. And you also teach yoga. I teach yoga as well. And sometimes for my patients, I even give them one or two yoga postures to uh, just to do that will help their pain or stomach ache. The, yes, just yesterday, I gave someone a, a yoga exercise that's called Uddiyana Bandha. It's a stomach Tell pump us. and it helps constipation. Oh, well, that's yeah. great. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> there's something really for everything, you know, it's, it's, it's wonderful. But the is the chakra system different from the meridian? The chakra system is a whole different system from mm -hmm. the meridian. And 
The chakras are vortices of circulating energy. So they're, they're kind of, if you think of them, a little wheel, wheels of energy uh, going along our, our astral spine. And that might, you might not know that word, but that's your energy spine. And things we do, uh, beneficial actions and harmful actions, uh, create results, and we call those results karma, but those little seeds of karma get locked up in your chakras. So, better to do good things and have good seeds, but we all have some seeds of karma that uh, get locked up in there, sometimes from emotional things, sometimes from some physical stresses, and those seeds of karma can uh, produce, sometimes they're emotionally people get uh, reactions to those, but sometimes physically too. Yes, so. I came, I had a thing with my throat, I said I don't understand this, but I think it has to do with when I was a small child having these procedures, and anyway, you use the tuning fork for my throat, because, right. yeah, because I was a baby, and right. I figured I was crying, and, um, and I was better, <laughs> but it was all part of a you know, an ongoing healing right. journey. And the tuning fork is a, if you hit the tuning fork and you put it, say, on an acupuncture point, it gives a vibration. I like to use middle C. It's kind of in the middle of all the octaves. And it, it feels good, too. It's just mm -hmm. this vibration that's very soothing. And you're just sort of vibrating the acupuncture point or the chakras. And it, it just is very soothing. I think it gets it to open up and to release. And that's what we're doing, too, with acupuncture is we releasing blockages, getting the flow of the energy. So there are viewers in actually in different places in the world right. and all around America. How would you suggest that someone, if they've been longing to find and try acupuncture, how, how would you figure out well, how to find you one? Know, at first, I'd make sure they're licensed, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, by some uh, accrediting body, wherever, whatever country you're in or place. And then after that, probably the best thing is word of mouth, mm -hmm. uh, you, you know, from your friends, like-minded friends, people that are like you and, you know, ask people uh, who they see or do they know any acupuncturists. Uh, I have so many people that say, you know, one person told me about you, but I, I didn't come. And then three people told me about <laughs> you, and then I finally made it here. Yes. So I think word of mouth is probably the, the best thing. Yes, it, three people at work see you, and that's how I got here. <laughs> <laughs> There's different styles of acupuncture, too. So that, that's good to know. There's, um, I practice a style uh, that I learned in Japan. It's a, uh, the Japanese needling style. So that uses an insertion tube that looks like a little straw, and that little insertion tube touches the, the um, skin and puts some pressure on it and lightly taps the needle in. When you do that style, there's no pain. I never feel when the needles yeah. are in. Yeah, but then there's another style that we call it the, the barefoot doctor style of acupuncture. And it's, uh, they use fewer needles and they put them in and they twist them. And it can, be, it can be painful. Now the barefoot doctors in China, there was a time when uh, doctors walked from village to village and they had to treat lots of patients and they didn't have places where they could lay down and take a rest. So they put them in, twisted the needles, got the chi, the energy to come to the needle very quickly mm -hmm. and um, took the needle out and it didn't get the long treatment. But, you know, I think for Americans, the Japanese style where you, you put the needle in, it doesn't hurt, you lay down and take a nap, we need that. We're just too stressed. Yes, yes. busy so, lives, right. fast pace. For uh, acute pain, say you were, you know, you're in acute pain and they put them in and twist them, that, that can be helpful. But as I said, for most people, they, they need a treatment that doesn't hurt, soothing. That, that's soothing, they can take a nap, they can relax, because um, we're just too busy. Mm -hmm. we, we need that. It's part of uh, their treatment. Well, I did have another experience with you, yeah. and um, I had I was having sciatica. Right. This was probably a, a year and a half ago or something. But I'm, I swear I could hardly well just it came on and I could hardly move around. And I work on the computer a lot, so I 
worked at a standing computer, but I was in pain, and Nancy was able to fit me in. She, she did a treatment, and I am not kidding, the next day I was dancing mm -hmm. at my <laughs> desk, and I had no sequelae mm -hmm. of, the, um, ac of the sciatica coming back. So that, yeah. I, I'm a real believer in this. And that can happen. Yeah. You know, generally with sciatica, because the sciatic nerve is the biggest nerve in the body, it can take a few visits. But sometimes you can turn around a condition just with one treatment. Mm -hmm. Just get that blockage released and feel my, the patient feels much better. Yes, I actually haven't had any yeah. trouble with it since. Yeah. Great. So it was amazing. Great. You're going to do a demonstration. I am. Me. Yes, and um, that's one of the things that you'll be addressing is just shoulder uh, Work on discomfort. your shoulder, yes. And um, I was rear-ended. Um, I don't have a lot of pain with any of these, but we just want to show the technique. And I'll be happy to do that. I'm, I'm looking forward to it. So today, you told me you had a little um, upper back and neck pain, a little bit going into the shoulder. Is that right? That's correct. Okay. So I'm going to put some needles in. Then our viewers can see what it looks like. Usually we do this with a person laying down, but it'll be easier for you to see what's going on. So she's going to be seated today. So first, we're just going to clean the points here. And then I use a sterile disposable needles. And these are so thin, you can't even, can't even see the needle. It's very, very teeny. It may look a little long, but the needle go, only goes in about a quarter inch. And the needle is in a, a tube. We call this the insertion tube. And the, first the tube touches the skin, and I hold onto the tube, and just tap the needle in. And there it is. And I didn't feel it. Did you feel anything? No, not really. not really. And again, insertion to press. And then we'll do two more on this side. Seems like your right side is a little tighter. Yeah. So are you uh, right-handed? Yes, I am. Okay. And often we put the needles in, in a symmetrical pattern, but, but not always. Sometimes just one side hurts. And this point up here just really helps release the tension in the shoulders. So far we're doing okay? Doesn't I'm, hurt? I'm doing great. Okay, good. I don't feel them. The needles are usually left in for about 30, 35 minutes, and you just take a little rest. After about five minutes, the endorphins release. Now, endorphin is a chemical in the brain that we all have, and endorphins are they're what make acupuncture work. Endorphins reduce your pain, uh, just they give you a sense of well-being. Uh, they actually increase our hormonal changes. So when we put in the needles and they release the dorf endorphins, that's what's producing the acupuncture uh, effects. I have one more needle here, so I'm going to find a tight place. I actually started feeling a wave of relaxation when you were talking. <laughs> right. So now what I would do is just leave these in for about 35 minutes, and when I would come back, she would be totally relaxed. Most people say, has it really been that long? It seems like it's just been five minutes. And they don't, most people don't even want to go home after their treatment. <laughs> so it's, it, isn't that true? It's You've had true. the treatments, yeah. <laughs> So and you always leave me with a little bell. I leave you with a little buzzer in case you need me. And, um, but it can be very relaxing and very healing. That has been my experience. We're going to use this tuning fork to actually vibrate the energy at the chakras. And by vibrating the energy at the chakras, it'll just help them open up a little bit. And sometimes I do this after my acupuncture treatments. So first I start by uh, hitting the tuning fork so it starts vibrating. I'm gonna start with the solar plexus. And I just let it vibrate until I don't feel the vibration anymore. I feel it. 
And this is actually very soothing. It's, it's a kind of a nice end to the treatment. Again, vibrate the tuning fork, heart chakra. It's very relaxing. Throat chakra. And there is something relaxing, even I can feel it just by waiting till that tuning fork just quits vibrating. The crown chakra. And now for the first chakra, we actually do the feet. And there's a special point I like to use. It's called kidney one. Um, it's at the bottom of um, kind of the first portion of the foot. And that a point is very good to release any fear from the body. She's getting more and more relaxed, almost asleep now. <laughs> All right, we'll come up and do the sacral chakra. This is the second chakra. And I like to end where I started, so we'll do the solar plexus chakra, the third chakra. And this is the center of will. It's the center of your, your own power. So we bring you back to your own, your own center. Well, thank you so much, Nancy, mm -hmm. for being a guest on the show, and thank you very much for the treatment. Well, you're welcome. It was fun. It was yeah. fun. <laughs> Are you a woman who has ever considered starting her own business? Then you'll be excited to meet Anna Zornosa, founder and CEO of a women's shapewear company called Ruby Ribbon. She is an inspiration.